Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series as we're learning how to use GIMP to create scroll saw portrait patterns. This will be lesson number five. You can find additional lessons over at scrollsawvillage.com. Look for the Village University Forum where you'll find uh, this lesson as well as other lessons, uh, some video tutorials, some written out instructions, and of course uh, additional source material and uh, what would a forum be without a little Q&A so uh, this is a great place to get your questions answered. Uh, this is going to be lesson five we're going to be creating a base pattern this is where we kind of start rolling up our sleeves and actually get into the pattern making process this is a pretty important step because this is well this is where we base all of our the rest of our pattern and uh, and our design upon so um, it's kind of important but before we get into creating the base pattern uh, we have to cover one more subject uh, one more fundamental that we need to cover and that is dealing with layers now layers are really important because these are really the cornerstone of what makes programs like GIMP and Adobe Photoshop so powerful uh, the ability to separate elements and uh, work with these elements as uh, individual pieces and uh, being able to manipulate those without affecting your overall project. Now if you go into the forums, uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, additional source materials. I have a, uh, I've uploaded a layers tutorial uh, demonstration, I guess. It's just a GIMP file that you could download so you could kind of follow along. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. And I have it already brought up and it looks like just uh, just the top of your desk. Now one of the easiest ways to kind of imagine uh, layers and understand exactly how to look at layers is to think about it as if you're looking down on top of your desk. And uh, we have uh, various elements on our desk or various objects on our desk I should say. We have a piece of paper, we have a pencil, we have a coffee cup, and of course a used tissue. Uh, so we're looking down on top of our desk so uh, the very first the bottom layer I guess you could say would be the desk and uh, the next layer would probably be the paper because uh, that's uh, below both the uh, the pencil and the coffee cup and uh, we could only assume that the paper would probably be below the used tissue as well and then uh, uh, we would have another layer of a pencil and another layer of a uh, of the coffee cup and of course another layer of the tissue and we could think of each one of these layers as a uh, object or uh, a, well I guess an object or an element of your design and uh, if we take a look at the layers dialog box I'm going to pull this on screen. You should have this open. If you do not, just come up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and just choose the Layers option, and you'll get something that kind of looks a lot, a lot like this. And this is where we have all of our layers. Uh, each one, each layer has one element, and uh, we could turn on and off uh, layers by clicking this little eyeball that just kind of toggles the visibility of that layer. So I'm going to uh, toggle all of these off. We're just going to look at, we're going to basically turn everything off. And what you're going to get is this checkerboard. Now this checkerboard, what that means is that uh, every time you see that checkerboard, that means uh, that area is transparent. So you'll be able to see through this layer to the layer below it. Well, there's nothing below it because everything's turned off, so everything's transparent. But if we turn on our piece of paper, as you can see, our piece of paper is, obviously the paper itself is not transparent. It's uh, its own object, but everything around it is checkerboard. Now let me turn on the desk, because uh, remember that all this part is transparent, so we should be able to see through this transparent area and show the layer below it, which if you look right here, the desk is below the piece of paper. So I'm going to click the, pa the desk back on and as you can see we moved uh, or you could see through the uh, transparent areas to the desk. Okay, Same thing kind of goes, let me turn off this, uh, same thing goes with the coffee cup. 
we could just see the coffee cup. The tissue, let me pull that over to the side, we can see the tissue by itself and we can see the pencil all by itself. So basically we, if we're looking down, the uh, bottom layer is going to be, well, the bottom of the, uh, the whole stack. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn that on so we have our desk. Uh, the next layer is going to be uh, sitting on top of the bottom layer. So we have our piece of paper. Click onto our coffee cup. As you can see, that's sitting on top of the uh, paper and uh, sitting on top, which is also sitting on top of the desk. And of course, we have a used tissue over here. And of course, our pencil, which is on top. Now the nice thing about this is when you keep elements separate like this, you're able to manipulate those uh, elements separate from one another. So for, let's say for instance, uh, we didn't really like that tissue over there. We can select the tissues layer and we can move it to wherever we want. Put it in our coffee cup if we want or maybe, uh, maybe just on our paper or maybe we could put it below the pencil. Maybe the pencil is resting upon the uh, tissue. We don't know, but uh, you can manipulate each one of these layers independently of the overall picture. Now you could also change the order of these layers by uh, grabbing a piece of paper. So let's move this uh, piece of paper on top of the coffee coffee cup. So you know the majority of the paper is going to cover the coffee pot uh, coffee cup, but uh, you'll see a little bit of the coffee cup uh, showing through. So let me pull this over here and. Uh, all you gotta do is you gotta click and drag and you'll see like this little arrow and there's gonna be a little black line that uh, appears across your layers palette and it will kinda uh, go between uh, two layers and that's basically how you could tell where it's gonna be dropped off if you remember from last time I'm having a little bit of trouble with my screen capture software it doesn't like me to let me uh, move um, elements within uh, some of these dialog boxes so I gotta do it off screen but uh, I went ahead and did that and as you can see the paper is now on top of the coffee cup. And I could do the same thing with the pencil. I can move the pencil below the paper. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can kind of see how that works. So now that we know that we have all of these separate elements on separate levels or layers, uh, you could uh, manipulate these uh, which means you could pretty much do anything you want so let's uh, move the pencil to the top layer again so we could just see it so let's just go ahead and resize uh, the pencil here so I'm gonna go ahead and resize the pencil I'm gonna hit scale as you can see we uh, resize the pencil uh, let's take a look at the coffee cup let's uh, you could also manipulate the colors so uh, let's just let's just get a little funky with this um, I won't really show you how to do this quite yet as we'll be playing around with it a little bit but as you can see we're changing the colors of our coffee cup so you could uh, manipulate layers by using filters or color corrections or anything like that. So you could really start to kind of see the uh, how powerful layers can be because uh, you could ha keep uh, elements on their own layer and uh, manipulate those individually or uh, the way we're going to be using it as is a way of backing up. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to open up our picture and then we're going to duplicate that picture before we add a, a filter to it. And then after we add that filter to it, if we need to do something else, we duplicate that layer once again, add another filter to it or do some color correction or whatever we need to do. And then after we're done with that, we, uh, we duplicate that layer once again. And that just uh, is just a way of saving uh, our work or our progress without having to go to file save as and giving it uh, version numbers. Uh, so let's say for instance we apply a filter to one layer and then uh, we decide to change the color. If we've duplicated that layer and we go back to decide you know I guess this color change really wasn't necessary or it really kind of goofed everything up. Uh, we could just delete that one layer and go back to the previous step uh, without kind of losing our spot. So it's kind of like a way of bookmarking or saving our, uh, our, 
our progress as we go. So now that we kind of just talked about layers real quick, let me just kind of show you around the window a little bit. I've already discussed the eyeball. The eyeball just uh, shows the visibility, whether it's visible or not. Uh, we have up here, we have the opacity. So let me uh, turn on the coffee. Uh, so we could change the opacity and you can make it semi-transparent. So if you ever want to do any ghost effects, you can do that with opacity. We have blending modes. Uh, we probably won't get too much into that in this class, but there's different kinds of blending modes. Uh, uh, dodge, burn, multiplies. Um, they get a little complicated. So they're kind of fun to play around with, so you could kind of uh, mess around with and see what you could come up with. Uh, over here we have a flyout window. Uh, we talked about these little flyout windows in a previous lesson, so we do have flyouts there. We have linking. Uh, so let's say we have the coffee and we want to link it to the tissue. Uh, we can link these two and then when we move it, we can move them as one unit. So linking may be uh, something that you may want to be playing with. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Let's look on the bottom here. This is a new layer. If you click that it creates a uh, little dialog box and it just asks you what you want to call the layer and gives you some options here. Uh, usually you want a transparent so but you could create a new layer and if you wanted to paint on that layer you can and if you decide you don't want it you could just check the visibility or delete it altogether. Uh, let's flip to the other side. Here's the delete button. Delete this layer. You click that button and it deletes it. Just that easy. Uh, this button here is uh, create a duplicate. So you just have a layer highlighted and we create a duplicate and it's going to create a copy of the coffee cup there. Let's go ahead and show you that. So we created a duplicate uh, version. You could also uh, grab any one of these layers and instead of dragging and dropping you could also use these little arrows that uh, uh, change the uh, order of the layers. So you could do it that way as well. Um, and you know that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah that's pretty much it. I think that's probably all we'll probably cover in this one. And uh, let's get into creating our base pattern. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this layers tutorial. I'm not going to save it because, uh, well, I just don't need to. Uh, I'm going to, let's go ahead and open up our project that we started on last week, the William Shatner project. So I'm going to come up here to file. I'm going to click open and I'm going to find my William Shatner uh, project. And as you can see, there is our William Shatner pattern. So, uh, as you can see, we still have our guidelines in, and uh, he scaled exactly where we need them. And over here, if we take a look at our layers palette, we have the pasted layer or our William Shatner layer, and we also have the background. The background is just uh, a white background, as you can see uh, uh, right there. So it's just a white background, and we'll just go ahead and keep it as is. Now this. Uh, well, let me show you one more thing about layers. We could also uh, name our layers. If you double click next to uh, on to the actual name, you could actually put in a, uh, a title. So I'm going to call this uh, a ridge uh, just to say that it's original. I'm going to hit return. So this is our original picture. Okay, so before we actually manipulate a picture uh, from one uh, step to the next, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that. So I'm going to click uh, the original picture, I'm going to click the duplicate button and it creates an original copy. So I'm going to name this thing, I'm going to call this uh, black and white. So BW will be my black and white, oops it didn't take, BW return and this will be, we're going to take this picture we're going to turn this into black and white because uh, as scroll saw artists <laughs> we only work in black and white, we don't work in color so why, uh, why design in color? So I'm going to select uh, the black and white uh, uh, layer there and I'm going to come up here to uh, colors. I'm going to come over here to desaturate and basically what that means is it's going to desaturate all the colors which makes it black and white. So I'm going to click desaturate and um, if you pull this over to the side uh, you could check uh, different versions 
of um, of how they choose to desaturate or remove the colors and uh, I would just kind of pick one that looks kind of nice uh, that's just kind of pleasing to your eye uh, lightness seems a little washed out luminosity seems to have nice definition so that might be something worth working with uh, average kind of takes the average of the two I'm gonna choose luminosity because it has a little bit more contrast and a little bit more um, depth and shadow it seems like so after you choose one just click OK and there is our black and white image okay so really the next step uh, since we work with uh, uh, shadows and highlights and stuff like that we kinda want to uh, um, I don't know embellish the uh, uh, the shadows and the highlights a little bit and we're gonna kinda mess around with uh, well, it's hard to call it color balance when there's no color, but that's really what you're working with. Uh, you want to kind of mess around with the uh, uh, the darks and the whites and all the gray tones in between. So we're going to try to uh, highlight uh, the bright spots and uh, really bring out the darker spots. So we're going to go ahead and mess around with color. So instead of uh, messing around with our black and white image that we worked so hard to get, uh, we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that. So I'm going to hit duplicate and uh, we have black and white copy. I'm just going to call this thing balanced maybe or curves. Let's call it curves. Uh, you'll see why here in a second because what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to colors and we have all these different options. Uh, color balance, hue, saturation, uh, brightness, contrast. That's a really nice one. Uh, levels, curves, posturize. Uh, these these are all kind of do similar things, but I like to use curves. So I'm going to click curves, and that's going to bring up this little window. Now this one's it's a little hard to read, uh, but basically down here in this corner, uh, this will be black, and way up here in this corner will be absolute white. And uh, what that does, uh, let me move the layers to the side so we can kind of see what we're working on a little bit better. Let me also zoom in a bit. Okay. Uh, so this is this is the dark blacks. These are the uh, white whites and all these are gray tones over here and these are kind of the graph of where all of your gray tones kind of fit in. Uh, what we could do is we could just kind of click in here and uh, pull this thing out and as you can see it really brought the whites up because you can see I brought the marker up in toward the whites up here uh, we could also move it the other direction and get it really dark okay now one of these things are probably not gonna do exactly what we want so what we're gonna look for is create like a little S curve so I'm gonna put in two points and I'm going to bring one just a little bit above the uh, this diagonal line and the, this one down here just below and what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of find something uh, uh, that we kind of like uh, so just kind of keep an eye on your image uh, like I said we want to kind of um, bring out the darks and uh, highlight the uh, lights uh, we don't want everything black and white quite yet. Uh, we still want to be able to see detail on his face. But, uh, you know, something like this. Let's zoom out just a tish, just so we can see. You know, I think something like that might kind of, kind of, kind of work for us. But uh, just go ahead and play with those curves. We're trying to get a nice little S curve, um, similar to that and uh, once you get something that looks kind of nice click OK and uh, there we got our uh, balanced or our uh, I don't know I just call it the curves uh, ju just that nice S curve so we could uh, bring out the darks bring out the highlights and uh, make them a little bit more prominent okay let's take a look at our layers palette once again and we're going to go ahead and duplicate this one and this uh, this time we're actually going to run a filter uh, filters are uh, cool little um, well I guess they're algorithms uh, uh, you could do a lot of really cool effects with filters and um, 
will show you some of those. But I'm going to call this one, uh, I'm going to call it photocopy because that's the exact uh, filter we're going to be using. So make sure you have your photocopy layer selected. Come up to filters and this is where we have all of our options. Now I'm going to come over here to artistic and you'll see a uh, option called photocopy. So I'm going to select that. Now this is going to pop up this little dialog box and one thing that's terribly annoying about GIMP is that you can't zoom in and out of this image. I don't think you can. No. Um, all you could do is kind of pan around it, which makes it very difficult to actually see what it's doing to your overall picture. Now what you can do is go ahead and enlarge uh, your dialog box as big as you can. I'm going to try to get it as big as I can so that it still fits on the screen so you can still see what's going on. And that's really the best I could do. And uh, unfortunately that's something we're going to have to live with. So we're in the photocopy dialog box and we have a lot of these little sliders. Uh, we have a mask radius, a sharpness, percent black, percent white. Okay, so what do these mean? Uh, let's, let's start with the percent white. Uh, basically the percent white and percent black, they're asking you how much of your image do you want white and how much of the image do you want black. Um, obviously we want white white, so we're going to go ahead and just move that over to, well maybe not one, but that might be a little extreme. And the percent black will just kind of boost that up. You know, maybe I have it a little bit backwards. Let's go ahead and move the sharpness up. And let's move the radius. There we go. Maybe the radius is what was giving us trouble there. Uh, I just move the mask radius all the way up because it's really going to grab a lot of these details like that. And actually, you know what? I'm really liking that already. See how nice that looks? You're starting to kind of see a lot of the details in the shadows. Um, you can start to see like the, the beginnings of a scroll saw pattern right there. Look how his lips are being used there. Uh, let's go ahead and try it like this. See, we're starting to get somewhere there. So basically what you're doing is you're just kind of playing around with those sliders until you find something that that kind of works for you. Now we don't want to necessarily go completely black and white uh, because there is a lot of detail in there that you might end up missing if you go completely black and white. So I like to leave some gray tones in there as well. So I'm going to pull this percent white down uh, just so we can see some of those gray tones because in the next lesson or as we continue working with this pattern we'll we'll be deciding exactly what what stays and what goes so I'm gonna pull this um, percent black I'm gonna pull that up fairly high I'm gonna keep oh I don't know percent white in in around there somewhere I think you know I think I really like that a lot so I'm going to click OK and it's going to go ahead and process my image. And there we have the beginnings of a scroll saw pattern. OK, and now this is where uh, layers gets really cool. Uh, so we could kind of experiment a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and hide. I'm going to bring over the layers palette. Let's go ahead and hide our photocopy. And let's select our curves one again. And let's go ahead and duplicate that once again. And we'll just call this photocopy two. And let's go ahead and experiment again. So let's come up here to color, to filters, artistic, photocopy. It's going to bring it right back up. And as you can kind of see, it left our settings from last time. So let's go ahead and uh, see what else we could do. Uh, let's, well, let's bring the percent black all the way up. Let's just see what the heck happens. 
see if we like that. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, uh, that's what that looks like. And you, as you could probably tell, it's not nearly as interesting as our first version. So we could kind of uh, do a little bit of trial and error by using uh, our copies and we'll just hide them and uh, you'll try out a few different filters and uh, once you find something that you kind of like, um, we'll just go ahead and delete this one because this one I don't like at all. That, that doesn't work for me so I'm going to hit the delete. Uh, let's just do one more. So photo, photo copy two. We'll try something. Uh, again and see if we could get something that works a little bit better and you remember we bumped that percent white let's let's pull this down quite a bit let's pull percent black down let's see what that looks like that's pretty interesting too let's look at our original one not a whole lot of change it's something, but it's not a whole lot of change. I still think I like our original better, so I'm going to just go ahead and delete Photocopy 2. And as you can see, it's just mostly kind of a trial and error thing. Uh, you try something out, see if it works, and if it doesn't work, uh, just duplicate that layer again and try it again. Uh, so this is basically our base pattern. This is where we're going to actually build the rest of our pattern on. And uh, in the next lesson, we're going to kind of talk to you well, we're going to talk about trying to uh, uh, how to pick out uh, the important details and which details should go and uh, all that other good stuff. So look at us. We're getting into pattern making. This should be pretty exciting times. So be sure you tune in next time where we pick up with our GIMP tutorial in Lesson 6. I believe we're going to be talking about... Um, uh, bridges and islands and peninsulas and lakes uh, really the cornerstone of what makes a scroll saw pattern a scroll saw pattern so be sure to check that out I invite you to swing over to scrollsawvillage.com and look for our village university forum uh, where you'll find this tutorial as well as others and uh, we have uh, written out instruction uh, source materials for both this uh, this particular pattern of William Shatner as well as the layers tutorial uh, pattern that you could download and take a look at. Uh, we also have uh, classroom discussion and uh, and all that other good stuff so swing on by over to scrollsawvillage.com uh, we look forward to seeing you there and until next time happy scrolling.